It's an impressive corridor that leads to the heart of Vizzy Park. The faces that adorn these walls are the faces of Carlton champions, each of them having played more than 200 games for the club. Among them, Stephen Kernahan, Craig Bradley and the great John Nichols. And this week, another Carlton champion joins their ranks. Scotland will take to the field for his 200th Carlton game in Friday night's clash with Essendon at the MCG. It's been a time of reflection for the 32-year-old who notched up his 250th AFL game just a few weeks ago. Well, you came to Carlton after playing 53 games at Collingwood, so you've had most of your career here. What does the Carlton Football Club mean to you? Oh, everything. Um, you know, uh, probably one of my proudest uh, Moments was a couple of years ago when I was awarded life membership, and um, yeah, it was a club that gave me another opportunity. Um, when uh, yeah, my time might have been looking like coming to an end at, at Collingwood, I was you know playing in the seniors there, and, and um, yeah, I got a coach who was willing to, to give me an opportunity and, and get me across. And um, yeah, since since the moment I've, uh, I've come, I've loved the place. You know, fantastic people, and. Uh, you know, there were some tough times there in a few lean years in terms of win-loss and the club was in a bad position financially but, but you know, have good people around, good teammates and it just really made it enjoyable in them tough times and we're starting to come through now and it's, yeah, it's, look, it's, a, it's a great club and, and I I'm, I'm feel very honoured to have been able to wear the jumper. I know that you're good mates with Anthony Kutafides and he was one of the players that took you under his wing when you came to the club. Who were some of the other players you looked up to at the time? Uh, yeah, Scotty Camparelli was here, Matty Lappin, they were the older players. Brendan Favola was here, um, he was my age, but, so I, I knew him um, from under 18s, we played Field Cup together. Uh, Lance Whitnell, um, yeah, so I was, it was a unique situation, I suppose, when I first came there. 16 of us come from different clubs, we were basically called the rejects from other clubs. Uh, there was no uh, draft picks, Carlton were sanctioned in that, in that time, so um, we were you know, through trades and, and what, so, what, what, what not, uh, they were able to get um, 16 players from other clubs. So we'll, it was like a new club, I suppose, at that stage, um, with so many new faces around. And um, it made probably the transition coming from, a, from another club to, to Carlton a lot easier because it was, instead of you being one or two players new, it was, it was nearly a whole, whole new side. So, um, yeah, but the older players, obviously, um, you know, Scotty Camparelli was one, Darren Hume is another. I, I, uh, you know, I admired the way, the way he played his footy, you know, to probably. Um, you know, that I, that I looked up to when I got here. Tim, veteran, probably seems a bit harsh at the age of 32, but you are the most senior player on the list. Do you see yourself as a role model for the younger players in the team? Uh, most definitely, um, you know, I suppose, uh, yeah, you, well, when I say most definitely, you don't sort of visualise yourself as you know, you're the role model for the, for the younger players, that they want to be like you. It's more so, I suppose, through my experiences of being around now, I, I, hopefully I can give some education or some help to some of the young players from some of their experience, what they're going through, or, or just out in the field when they're a little bit nervous or unsure on, um, on what they should be doing, how they should be playing, where they should be positioning and, and etc. So, um, you know, I suppose that being comfortable now playing, being a senior footballer and, and um, playing so many games, I suppose it's you know, my job as most players that have been around now that, that you, you, know, you educate the younger players and yeah, you, you help lead them along the, along the way. You might be the most senior player on Carlton's list in years, but week in, week out, Pete Scotland shows why he was named the Blues Best and Fairest in 2012. I've heard a lot about your training ethic and your hard work on the track. Is that something that you pride yourself on? Yeah, look, it's definitely probably what's held me in good stead and been able to play uh, you know, a lot of football and, and hang around as long as I have, I suppose. Um, I'm a big believer that you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get, and um, it seems to have been a formula that's worked okay for me at the moment. And, um, yeah, look, uh, you have your times where you, you need to recover and get your body right, but, but generally, for me, it's, there's no substitute for hard work, and um, yeah, I enjoy it, so you know, it works well. Winning Carlton's Best and Ferris last year must have been pretty special. Yeah, it was something I, I hadn't expected, and um, look, yeah, it, it was a, um, something I cherish and really, um, I suppose, yeah, cherish when I finish playing football. Um, it's something I'll really look back and, and, and be fond of. At the moment, you're still sort of aiming to win a premiership like every player, and that's your main focus, but. Um, yeah, look, it was, it was a great honour and, uh, and I was thrilled, uh, uh, thrilled last year and um, yeah, look, it's, I suppose it's, it's a nice reward for, for hanging in the game for a while. 
Although he's no longer in Carlton's official leadership group, Scotland's teammates say he doesn't need the title. You know, on-field leadership is uh, second to none out there. A lot, of the, a lot of the boys take a lot out of him. A lot of the young guys also get a lot out of him, but um, off the field, you know, he's a, he's a bit of a character, pretty funny guy. Um, he'll be uh, the first one to take, a, take the mickey out of here, but also uh, a few boys give it back to him, which is good, but, um, you know, he's a, one of the most loyal blokes you'll meet. Um, and, you know, his on-field record speaks for itself. And obviously, his leadership, and he's been here for a long time, so he knows what's expected of the young fellas coming in. He's, um, I'd say he's been a mentor for a few years now, so to get him as my mentor has been a yeah, massive help in my game. I think the thing I respect about him most is uh, he's just he's willing to, to want to win so badly and willing to do anything uh, that he can to help us. Um, his intensity and his want uh, to win, like I spoke about, hasn't dropped off one little bit in 250-odd games. So. Uh, look, it's a, real, it's a real credit to him, um, he's done things the right way and I uh, wish him all the best in his 200th. It hasn't always been smooth sailing for Scotland, but in his life outside football, there are some special people who have given him a new perspective, his family. Um, yeah, at the moment uh, you, know, you have kids and you're married, your, your, life, ch your life changes completely, um, a lot more responsibility and um, you know, where I suppose on the weekends you want to get out and, and spend time with your friends. Now it's, you know, you know, every spare minute I want to spend time with my kids. So, uh, yeah, it definitely uh, was a, a huge lifestyle change and, and one I, I, I don't regret one bit. It's been fantastic. I you know, wish it had happened earlier, basically. But, uh, yeah, look, I've, I've loved every minute of being a father and, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting and it's, it's been great. And where to be for Scotland in the future? A few more years of footy? I don't know, yeah, look, I, you know, I'm realistic in the fact that it, you know, it's, you know, this could be my last year. You know, I'm not sure what's going to happen uh, this year if I, if I want to go on, if the club want, want me to go on next year. So something will assess at the end of end of the year, I suppose. Um, at the moment I feel good and while there's that, that, that premiership chance still dangling, uh, you know, the hunger's still burning inside, so I'm still chasing that dream and I'll hang on as long as I can. But um, look, yeah, in terms of playing, I'll, I'll assess that with um, you know, the club and Mick uh, you know, towards the end of the year and see what, what both parties feel feels best. And uh, after footy, um, yeah, look, I'm not sure. I, you know, I'd like to stay in the game to some capacity, whether you know, whether it be development or coaching or you know, w whatever. I, I love the game. It's what I've always wanted to do and be involved in. So I'll, I'll hope to sort of to, to do something like that. If not, you know what, I, I, I'm not qualified in any other um, job or um, or industry, I, I wanted to be you know, in, in the Fire Brigade, which probably looks like it's um, you know, probably more not the case than it is at the moment. So, but I'm a big believer, you know, one, one door shut, another one will open. I'll find a passion that I can really put, you know, put everything into, and uh, and yeah, we'll get by. Well, 200 games, huge achievement. Congratulations, and all the best for the future. Thanks very much. <laughs>